When you think about the reasons why PhDs are so long, obviously the sort of things that come to mind are, well, it takes ages to become an expert in something. You know, the PhD system was actually developed to turn people into free thinking academics, to train their minds into thinking a certain way so they can understand more about the world and then take that knowledge and present it to their peers and other people so that people can build on that knowledge. So that's why it takes a long time and that's why the PhD system is structured in a way where it's kind of like an apprentice and a master kind of uh, relationship with your supervisor. But if I was being hmm, a little bit picky, I would say that there are deeper reasons why a PhD can take up to nine years. And that is due to the motivations of the university and the supervisors that the PhD student works under. So a university ultimately sees PhD students as cheap labor. Like where else? And in what other system can you get people that have spent up to four to five years training themselves to enter a, a job, which essentially a PhD student is, they're doing a job, they're doing research for a university under a supervisor. Um, where else will you achieve you know, such a high level employee at such a low rate of pay? Even, you know, it even goes to the point where some PhD students pay to do a PhD. So that's just insane for me. So their motivation isn't to, for you to get a PhD, it's to keep you in the system for as long as possible so you can crank out the research, bring in grant money via your supervisor. And if you think about the supervisor's motivation, in that instance, sometimes a supervisor needs people under them to do their research, which means that if they don't have a certain sort of critical mass of PhD students, and postdocs, they can actually delay the PhD student from graduating because they wouldn't have anyone sort of coming through the system to further their research career. Um, you know, supervisors very rarely get in the lab in my experience and uh, those are maybe some of the more sinister reasons of why a PhD can take a significant amount of time. Now we're going to go through some of the other ones um, and go through some tips and tricks just to make sure that you stay on track and that your PhD doesn't blow out into something that uh, takes you, you know, nine or 10 years. I've heard of a guy doing his PhD for more than 10 years and uh, I just don't know why it took that long. Let's make sure it's not you. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. I'll put a link in the description. Sign up there because I'll be releasing something very special in the next couple of months and I want you to be the first to find out about it. And also, if this video is useful, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Unless you're that one person that seems to be disliking the video, uh, continue doing that. A PhD takes a long time because you are now trying to become an absolute expert in a certain field. Now we've all seen that kind of uh, diagram where if you if you sort of consider all of human knowledge a big circle, a PhD is pushing out on that circle in one very specific point. And if loads of PhD students push out um, and other researchers obviously push out in um, all of the directions, that knowledge bubble gets bigger and bigger and bigger and uh, ultimately getting to the point where you are an expert in a certain field takes a very very long time and you know it takes the order of two to three years before you really start becoming super comfortable with the the knowledge that already exists in your field the gaps that are there and then building up the skills so that you can fill those gaps and then report that back to the scientific community. And so that obviously takes time. You know, the first year is really just trying to get up to speed with literature and skills that you need. You, you very rarely have the skills coming into a PhD that will get you to the end goal, which is, you know, as an expert presenting a thesis or a number of papers to show that you're worthy of holding a PhD. Um, and so, you know, the first year is just just about understanding where the current field is and then building on that 
over the next couple of years and adding some novel new information to the field. Um, and you know, that just takes time. So it can take, in my experience, probably about a year to year and a half to build up the skills and lay the foundations from which you can build your very own PhD. And a lot of supervisors that I have spoken to and worked under say that, you know, about halfway through their PhD, they, they expect the, the PhD student to go from being led to being the leader in that project. So about halfway through is when you should start feeling like you know what's going on and you know the imposter syndrome thing sneaks in and be like oh is can I really do this but yes you can you, you know after about two years or a year and a half you've found uh, all the information you need to start working on getting your own stamp on that field. Another reason PhDs take so long is because PhD students get sidetracked all the time. I cannot tell you how often PhD students are required to like run equipment for their supervisors, do other little experiments for other people, known as paper baiting that I've talked about in other videos, where someone comes to you and goes, hey, you'll get your name on a paper if you just do this little experiment for me. And uh, that happens more often than not, and that can just blow out. You know, once you're doing other people's research, you're not working on your stuff, so you get sidetracked. And then, you know, a couple months go by and you're like, oh, okay, the paper is done or like I've done that thing but where am I in terms of my progress for my PhD and that can really sort of uh, impact because in the early stages of your PhD you really have to work hard you don't see much progress necessarily but you need to work hard so that when you kind of compound interest all of your uh, efforts before they just you know return exponentially it's not necessarily a linear you know put effort in get results um, kind of relationship it's like trial error trial error trial trial things, work it out. Uh, and you know, if you don't do that very early on, you can really sort of impact your progress later on in your PhD. Um, and also just time management in general, people get sidetracked because a PhD feels like a long time, you know, it's years and years. But uh, if you get into the habit of being like, well, you know, I'll leave early these days, or I don't need to write today, or you know what, I'll take the afternoon off, which is absolutely fine if you do it every so often, but if you're not strict with yourself the majority of the time about sticking to a routine, you know, doing research, getting results, writing it up, reporting it, just keep doing that over and over and over again and you'll get a PhD. And obviously you'll fail loads of times, but uh, time management is a huge thing focus and uh, go check out my other video where I've got the perfect PhD daily schedule for keeping you on track. Now this is an area where I feel like potentially universities and their motivation for attracting PhD students is a little bit more sinister than I really would like it to be. And that is the motivation of the university system is that PhDs and early postdocs, I would say, are very cheap labor. Now, I am absolutely amazed. One of my very good friends, um, he has got his own research funding. He is um, an, an an amazing academic who is capable of clearly bringing in research funding, supervising students, being project leads, all of this stuff, writing up, like, you know, he is an academic in his own right. And the university does not allow him to be paid at a reasonable rate. He stood on about, I think, $80,000 a year, which is, you know, a good amount of money. But considering that my uh, other friend who hasn't got a PhD and worked in industry for ages is on $120,000 a year, just shows you the disparity between academia and how academic and PhDs are valued versus how industry and um, the outside world can value that kind of higher level degree. Um, and so yes, universities want to keep PhD students around for as long as possible because they are cheap labor. I mean, you know, a PhD student, what does it cost? I mean, at the moment when I went through uh, in 2007, it was about $20,000 Australian dollars a year. And I know that's gone up now to maybe $30,000 a year. You can get industry top ups where industry sponsors your project and you get, you know, a reasonable wage. But, um, 
Where is the motivation there for universities to actually pump out PhD students? You want to keep them in, the, in your bubble for as long as possible so that they produce research. And I think maybe that's why in the States we see the PhDs being super long, you know, like seven to nine years, because not only is there coursework, not only is there research, not only is there insane competition, but that's just what the universities have worked out works well for them in terms of getting as much value from their very small investment in a PhD student, which can be, you know, can be free. PhD students can pay to do a PhD and then you have to stick around and, put, and you know, I understand the argument that, um, you know, you're getting a PhD that is valuable, that, you know, they're paying for the lab stuff, you know, all of that. I, I get it, I get it. But remember, these are people that have already done an undergraduate degree and in most cases already done a postgraduate master's degree. So I just cannot believe that universities are able to get away with paying so little for such highly educated people for that many number of years. So yes, a PhD can take a long time because essentially the university system has worked out that they are very cheap labor and they're motivated because they're scared and uh, yeah, they're very, very inexpensive to uh, keep around. So another reason that I have seen PhDs stretch out beyond reasonable timelines is because the supervisor has not got their shit together. So essentially, I know supervisors who never get information back to the student, who never meet up with them, who are always away, always busy, never respond to emails, um, you know, don't get back paper drafts with a reasonable time. You know, it can take months sometimes for some supervisors to get back these drafts. Now, when someone takes on a PhD student, it should be expected that they are, you know, it's not, you're not hiring an employee, you are there as the mentor. And it just amazes me how many PhD supervisors just don't see that as the sort of um, the, the, the mode of the relationship, but rather they're like, ah, it's fine, they're doing a PhD, they'll sort it out. But no, they are the mentor. And in the first couple of years, they should be incredibly responsive, they should help grow you. And uh, if that doesn't happen, and they are very slow with getting back paper drafts or thesis drafts, that can really blow out um, the timeline of a PhD. And ultimately, your supervisor in a lot of universities has to sign off to say, yes, this, this person can submit their thesis because I approve of its submission. And if that doesn't happen, uh, because of whatever reason the supervisor's got, that can also blow out, you know, six months to another year easily because they haven't looked at the thesis, they don't approve it, and they don't make it a priority. So choosing your supervisor is very important. One of the last reasons that I think PhDs take a long time is the type of people that they attract generally are perfectionists. And my big like motto is done is better than perfect. You know, don't let perfection get in the way of progress. And it's unfortunate that a lot of people get to a PhD, you know, with the clever ones, we don't like looking silly, but in fact it is looking silly that will actually help you improve and get beyond um, the kind of uh, writing stage. So, you know, when you're writing a PhD uh, thesis or a paper, or even just getting a supervisor or someone else to look over your uh, presentation presentation that you're giving to your lab mates or your other you know, people in your research group, you have to be a little bit vulnerable and you have to say, look, I've given it a go, what do you think? And you do have to kind of accept criticism and a lot of people's perfectionism means that they just don't even get to that stage. They work far too long on the task that they need to, to get through before asking for feedback. Now, one of my rules now, and it was during my PhD, was get feedback early, get it often, and uh, learn from it. You know, my PhD supervisor was incredible. She turned me into a much better writer than I had ever been before, and that's because she would sit down with me and go through chapters. You know, she wouldn't, and she would actually old school style, she would get a, a piece of paper and she'd write on it with red pen and seeing just like your your hard work absolutely ruined and barely visible through the red pen was initially very confronting. But ultimately now, many years later, I still remember some of the things she wrote on the paper. And as I'm writing, I go, oh yeah, I shouldn't do that or I should do this or, oh yeah, that's what. And you know, it's like I can hear her voice in the back of my mind telling me uh, how it should be done. So yes, perfectionism can be a huge barrier for progress in a PhD and uh, sometimes just 
being brave, being vulnerable and saying, you know what, this isn't how I would want it, but I need someone to look at it now because, you know, I've spent far too long. And an idea, you know, when you start getting to the point where you're just really sort of polishing the details, you need to get it off. Like I used to do a first draft, have a read through a couple of times and then get it sent off. Like that was the way for me to overcome perfectionism and wanting it to sort of show me in my best light. But ultimately, once you submit it to a journal, they don't know if you've, you've kind of d uh, done it on your own or if all of the authors have contributed to the paper equally. You know, it's just about getting progress through your PhD. So don't let perfectionism get in the way. So there we have it. There are all of the most important important reasons and the most prevalent reasons for why a PhD takes so long, let me know in the comments what you would add to that. And also remember to give this video a thumbs up if it was useful. I shall see you in the next video. Look after yourself.